Hello, welcome back to Three Phase Circuits. We're finally, finally, finally going to start our first problem. It's going to be a simple problem to begin with, but as we go on, we'll of course get into more complicated arrangements. But honestly, to be truthful, what you're going to find out is since I front loaded the class with so much important information, and hopefully, I know you don't have practical experience with it yet, but hopefully, it kind of makes sense. Uh, since we spent that time doing that, these problems, once we get in even to the difficult ones, they won't seem difficult. So here is your friendly neighborhood three-phase circuit. Almost all three-phase circuits are going to look something like this. They look ugly, but you just have to kind of decompose it into phases and to see what's going on here. So what we have is a Y-connected source. You can tell because they all come to a common point. There's no triangles for a delta here. And we have a Y-connected load. Now for phase A, the source is 120 at an angle of zero degrees. That's pretty typical. You're going to see phase A having a zero degree reference. Uh, this resistor uh, before the lowercase a, this is implying the source impedance. This is the impedance of the source here. That's how we represent it. This guy between the letters here, this is the impedance of the line, the actual transmission line. And then this impedance over here, in this case we have a resistor and an inductor, this is load A impedance. This is load B impedance, this is load C impedance. And of course this is the line impedance. Uh, you, can, you can kind of read it down, line impedance going up, they're all the same. Line, and this is the source impedance, impedance of this source, impedance of this source, impedance of this source. All right, so the question is, is the circuit balanced? Because a balanced three-phase circuit is a beautiful thing. When you have everything balanced properly, and we've talked about the constraints, we haven't done a problem yet, then what ends up happening is, all of your voltages and currents are going to form, uh, they're going to form balanced three-phase sets. And also, in this case, y, when the YY arrangement, even though we have a return path uh, that allows current to go back, all of the phases are behaving in such a way that that return path, I0, is going to actually have zero current in there. So you could take it out, you could throw it away, you could put a short circuit there, uh, whatever you want to do. In this case, notice we actually have a short circuit uh, drawn in this, case, in this particular case because for real balanced circuits, there's no current flowing in the return leg anyway, and we've talked about all that stuff in the past. So in this case, we're trying to identify, is the circuit balanced? So we have to go through a checklist. Okay, the first thing we need to figure out is, uh, is the, do we have a balanced three-phase source? All right, so the first thing we need to check is uh, the magnitudes of the A phase, the magnitude of the B phase, that's for this, and the magnitude of the C phase, they're all the same. That's, that's correct. We don't list any frequencies when we talk about phasers because we kind of imply that the frequencies are all the same, so we say that that's the same as well, and that's check. The third thing is we need to check the phase angles and make sure that they form a balanced three-phase set. So here we have zero, we have negative 120, and we have positive 120. So your first gut reaction is, yes, this is a balanced three-phase set because everything's plus or minus 120. But I always uh, actually recommend, almost for every problem, to go ahead and draw this silly little diagram that really helps you visualize things, this phasor diagram. So this is the A phase, 120 at an angle of zero. So we're going to call it, uh, this is the neutral conductor over here. We're going to say uh, this is going to be V, um, you could do it, uh, well, let's see here. This capital N over here, and then on the left-hand side of the circuit, I forgot to put lowercase n. So lowercase n is where everything comes together on the left. Uppercase n is where everything comes together on the right. So the voltage here, this voltage source, we're going to label it VAN, and we put it as the horizontal line because it's zero degrees. Now the B leg is at minus 120, so if this were minus 120, you would swing it out over here like this. So we would call this VBN. And then the C phase is at positive 120 relative to this, so that's over here. So that would be something like this, VCN. So you look at this and you say, well, okay, it looks like A is separated from B by minus 120 degrees. That's check. And then A is separated to C by plus 120 degrees. That's check. Now in this case, it's really easy because A was 0, B was minus 120, and C was positive 120. All you're checking for is to see that these uh, that these voltage sources form a balanced three-phase set, which means they have the same uh, amplitude, the same frequency, and that they're all separated by 120. So this is separated by this by 120, this is separated to this by 120, and also it's not drawn, but it's implied that this is also separated, C and B are separated by 120. And as a second pr part of the problem, if I asked you, what was the phase sequence? I didn't ask you, but if I said, hey, what's the phase sequence? Is this a positive or negative phase sequence? then the easiest way to do it is not 